this is Ian Cohen from Terra, and I am doing a quick demo video of the new chat GPT uh, chatbot that we just posted an article about. So here's just a few examples of how educators could make use of this new tool and also things to look out for. So what you see in front of you are a few questions I'm going to put into the chat GPT I always say GPT, GPT chatbot, and we'll see what happens. So we've got some sample problems. So uh, how educators, you might use this to actually produce different sample problems or essay prompts. We've got strategies, uh, strategy questions. And then I also am going to demonstrate what uh, students might use this for and why it presents some challenges. So I have the... Uh, chat GPT open here in my browser tab. It's again, free to use this, free to test. You'll see these are the disclaimers they give you when you first go in. Our goal is to get external feedback, which is great. And then while they have safeguards in place, they always make sure to remind you that it's possible the chat GPT produces incorrect or misleading information or stuff that's biased. And so they say it's not intended to give advice. And this is just where I would say, you wanna use common sense here. Um, keep the questions towards high level suggestions, things that can be informed by research. Um, and yeah, take it all with a grain of salt, but these certainly help expand your horizons uh, in terms of ideas. All right, so let's get started. Um, they also mentioned they collect data. So uh, what I'm gonna type in feeds into their model, helps makes it better, but they don't share anything. Okay, they asked for feedback, it's all great. So they give you a few examples here you could start with, but as I showed before, I've got some examples. So let's start with the first one. I'm just gonna ask it to give me 10 math word problems that align to Common Core standards for third grade math. This is very common. You know, we're always looking for sample problems, problems to try with our students, um, and we wanna make sure they're aligned. So I didn't even put a specific standard in, I just said Common Core Math. But let's see what it gives us. So I'm just gonna paste it in here. You can type it in, hit enter. You can see it's already generating stuff. So Juan has 12 apples. He gives three apples to his sister. How many apples does he have left? You know, this is third grade math. So we expect these to be fairly simple. Um, but as you can see, these are uh, a great set of quick questions that you might be able to use. And what's cool about this is you can actually ask it to modify its responses. So we see all of these. You can imagine if you're creating your lesson um, or just trying to do, you know, your do now or your, uh, even just to create extra work in case students uh, finish things, um, keeps a log of what I'm asking. I've got all of these things. Alex has a collection of stickers. He has 18 more animal stickers. Uh, if he has 27, you know, they, they have some solid things. You see, it took two seconds to produce this. Now, let's say, um, can you make questions a little more difficult. Look at that. It immediately gives me, it says, sure, here are 10 math word problems for higher levels, such as fourth through fifth grade math. So again, one of the challenges when you're scaffolding or differentiating, or even just having extra problems ready to go for those students who might be progressing at a faster pace, ChatGPT could be the quickest solution possible to produce new questions for, for you to use with your students, um, to have as extra credit, to have as worksheets on the side. You can see it starts incorporating decimals, fractions, uh, and it's just really incredible for this, this simple task of producing sample problems. Let's try another one. You can see it keeps going here. Um, at the beach, there's 72 shells. We find twice as many shells, Jake. Yep, so it's a great logic and math problem. All right, so that was our example one. Now let's see if we do something a little bit different. If I'm, I'm teaching American history and I want to give my students essay prompts at the high school level to explore the cause of the American Revolution. So I paste in this question. What are three possible essay prompts for high school students to explore the cause of the American Revolution? All right, so you can see again, it's a very quick response for questions like these, and it gives us three solid questions that you could use. Analyze the economic, political, and social factors that contribute to the outbreak of the American Revolution. Examine the role of enlightenment ideas and how they influence the American colonies' desire to independence. Explore the actions of systems. So you can see it hits three different 
uh, angles for this question. Uh, so it's not just giving the same things with rearrange language, it's actually three separate perspectives on a question. Um, and now I'm going to modify it. Can you align these essay prompts to uh, AP college level? All right, so you see immediately it's going to change these to be aligned to the AP college level. Now, of course, you're going to want to check this, but if you're teaching AP history in this case, you already know what is in the standards. And so you can do your common sense, your gut check, sanity check, call it whatever you want. Um, but you can check it all out and, and really assess whether these are right for your students or not. But it does take a lot of legwork out of it if you find that they are aligned to what you want. And even if you don't use it word for word, you could take the basic construct of the questions or prompts and use them and modify them, of course. Okay, so let's let's try some different ones. So we did uh, using ChatGPT as for producing sample problems or prompts, which again for educators is great for preparation, uh, for extra work, for scaffolding. Now let's see if they have ideas for strategy. Student engagement is such a big deal right now. So we've got a couple of sample questions for student engagement. First one is, I teach 12 year olds and want to find some ways to get them up and moving around the classroom. What could I do with them? So maybe you're a middle school teacher uh, and you really need to harness that student energy at that age and get them moving around, but you're also worried about uh, how to structure that so they don't run amok. So let's put this question into the chat. Again, you can see quick response time here. There are many ways to incorporate movement and physical activity into the classroom for 12 year olds. Here are a few ideas. Uh, I like how it's always excited to respond to your questions. All right, so let's see what it's telling us. The first one, incorporate brain breaks into your lesson. These can be short physical activities that students do for a few minutes to refocus their energy. Some examples might include stretches, yoga poses, or short dances. That's a good suggestion. You know, as a former teacher myself, Definitely use things like that just to get the kids up and out of their seats. Kind of breaks up the day, might jog them back into the moment. It's second suggestion, use interactive games and activities to review or practice new material. For example, you could use a game of Simon Says to review math facts or have students act out a skit to practice new vocabulary work. Again, that's a, that's a good creative solution that you could try. And of course, it's general enough that you look at it and say, oh, okay, I know how I can apply this to my current standards, my current students. That, that is really where the value comes here to give you an, uh, ideas, point you in the right direction. Let's look at a couple more. It says, encourage students to stand up and move around while working on problems or projects. For example, you could have them work in small groups and have each group rotate to different stations around the room. It's a nice suggestion. And again, you know your students, you know your classroom. Some of this is gonna force you to kind of push new ideas. Some of it you're gonna look at and say, well, maybe we're not ready for that. And you've got a couple more here. So that's a good first example of a strategy question. How about one a little bit more specific for my special educators out there? So we've got a question here. I work with a student on the autism spectrum and I can't stop them from hitting and or biting me. How can I redirect this behavior? All right, so we know that our special educators uh, encounter a lot of different situations and challenges and their students are, you know, have a lot of different goals and, and accommodations. And so let's see what we get for, maybe you're in a situation where, you know, you're having really trouble redirecting some of these more physical behaviors with students on the spectrum. Uh, here are some great instant uh, suggestions for you that chat GPT spits out. Again, you can see the benefit of here versus going to Google, where you have to sift through different sites that are all in the form of blog posts, and you got to deal with all their fluff, their ads, things like that. Or if you go to a Facebook page, tons of amazing Facebook groups out there for educators, we're a part of a lot of them. Um, but you know, it takes a while for somebody to respond, you don't know what kind of background they're coming in with. So there's actually even maybe a greater chance um, or likelihood of bias if you go to a random Facebook page. Whereas here, this is based off of all of the different language learning that this model ChatGPT has done. So let's see what they said. It's not uncommon for children with autism to exhibit challenging behaviors such as hitting and biting as a way of communicating their needs or expressing frustration. Here are a few strategies you can try to redirect their behavior. Use positive reinforcement to encourage appropriate behavior. Nothing earth shattering there, but a good reminder that one way to dissuade folks from 
one behavior is to highlight and make sure you appreciate a positive behavior that you've been seeing. You can redirect your student's attention to another activity or task. This can help to diffuse a situation, prevent the challenging behavior from escalating. So this is meant to be like really in the moment. You know, how can you just kind of break that, that tension or that energy and quickly redirect to something else? Use visual supports such as picture schedule or social story to help your student understand what is expected of them and how to communicate their needs. Again, uh, it's a, it's just an idea, an angle, then you have to apply it to your student and your setting. But I think this is really valuable in making it quick. So you almost have your own coach right here at your disposal. And they have a couple more suggestions. It does say it's important to remember that challenging behavior is often a way for children with autism to communicate their needs or express frustration. And addressing the underlying cause is the key to helping students learn more appropriate ways to cope with their emotions. So it's, it is reminding you that you have to be able to try to put your emotions aside in these heated situations and remember that your students are just trying to express something. They're just trying to um, communicate with you via this behavior. The question is, what are they communicating and how can you teach them a different communication style? Okay, so let's try, um, let's just look quickly at what some of the challenges are here. So if you're a student, this is where um, for you as a teacher, your students might find this this chatbot and uh, you know be able to use it for their own benefit, which may be uh, maybe challenging for you. And so let's just take a look. So let's say we assigned the student one of those prompts we created earlier, and they want to write an essay. So a student could log in here, create a free account, and say, "Write me a five paragraph essay that discusses the primary causes of the American Revolution." They click enter. And within, uh, you know, 30 seconds, they'll have their essay. Now, this, this is definitely a challenge. Um, fortunately, OpenAI, the organization that has built ChatGPT, uh, has created a tool that teachers can use in these situations, which I will show you in our next video.